Do you forget to put the cinnamon on your snickerdoodles? Put too many eggs in your pancakes? Eliminate these mistakes with a Recipe Manager 2020 from PLM411. Simply store recipes on these convenient forms. You'll always know the right ingredients. Include notes about production with a process instructions tool. No more mistakes while baking. Share a picture with a special graphic attachment tool. Everyone will see what a treat they're in for. It's even a snap to make changes with the optional redlining tool. Never use the wrong version again. Reusing your recipe? That's a piece of cake with the easy cloning capability. Working with others is also a snap too. Just share part of the recipe to clearly communicate their role and responsibilities. You can even close the loop by sending innovative suggestions to the master chef. Your valuable feedback will never be lost again. This may look ridiculous, but many manufacturers manage their product recipes, their bills of material, and other critical product data using manual methods almost this ineffective. Watch PLM 411 to learn a better way to manage product data and processes. Hi, and welcome to PLM 411 where we give you straight talk about how manufacturers can accelerate new product innovation and development. Uh, today I'm with Ron Lachlan of uh, Autodesk. He's a director responsible for the PLM 360 product. And hey Jim. How you doing? Good. Good. Uh, we're going to talk about why companies should care about PLM. So a lot of companies have heard about PLM. They may know a little bit about it, but they may not know is it right for them or exactly what it can do for them. So um, maybe I'll just pose the question to you, why should, why should somebody care about PLM? Right, so the answer is really the same for whether the company's large or small, but there's two fundamental reasons. It all boils down to two things. One is it'll give a company insight into the product mm -hmm. in the product innovation cycle. And second of all, it will save them money, maybe through reducing scrap, maybe through being more rapid to market boils down to those two things. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and actually it matches up a lot with the research that I've done over the over a number of years now, um, really seeing PLM driving top line uh, improvements to businesses through time to market and innovation, mm -hmm. but also uh, taking cost out of, uh, you know, product development process as well as taking cost out of products even. So, yep. um, we're very good. So, uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about what are some of the problems that companies tend to solve with PLM when they when they talk to you? I mean, what are they what are they looking to fix? Right. So there's there's a lot of different areas that PLM can address. PLM can can work in, but what we found is fundamentally um, it revolves around the bill of materials, the mm -hmm. recipe for a product or a product design. And what PLM does is if you start with this recipe of a product, um, you get control of the, of the product, of its components, and of the processes around that, and you build off of that very closely related to the, the recipe for the product, the bill of materials, you have the engineering change sure, order process. Right. If something fails, if there's a change in the design, if your supplier, if you switch a supplier, for example, mm -hmm. you have an engineering change order and you have to do this efficiently and you have to do it accurately, otherwise you'll lose money. Yeah, so. absolutely. And it, it's not just money, it's time. I right. mean, you know, right. it's one of the things, I had a study on engineering change and you know, one of the big things that happens is, you know, you also disappoint your customers, but you don't get the changes out as quickly, so you don't get the benefits of the change right. that you're looking for. Um, you know, a lot of what you talk about is internal to the business or and, and internal engineering, but it starts to work its way out a little bit into Definitely. other areas of the business. Maybe you can talk yeah. a little bit about that. So as you go further beyond the bill of materials and the ECO, the engineering change order process, you touch on things like quality management. Yeah. And you can buy quality management systems off the shelf, but if you tie it to the PLM process, to the bill of materials, you can do things like, um, if you have a part that fails, you can track it, you can adjust it, you can improve the design, and work that into your process. Um, and that's often external to your company. Similarly, the supply chain management process, in today's economy, even small companies, as well as large companies, work globally with many other different yeah. suppliers. And that, that's part of the PLM uh, ecosystem that's well beyond your company walls. And PLM can help you manage suppliers. So another good example, again, all tied to the, the recipe for the product, the bill of materials, as well as the engineering change order process, et cetera. Yeah, and actually I, I talk about something called the uh, four dimensions of PLM expansion. And we mm -hmm. see PLM really expanding to a richer view of the product. Mm -hmm 
you know, further up and down the product life cycle, uh, but also to more people and to more processes. Um, you know, speaking of processes, uh, you know, we've talked a little bit about products so far. Maybe we should talk about, you know, PLM really addresses uh, products, but also um, projects and, and processes and workflow. So maybe you can touch on some of that. So a really good example <clears throat> there is uh, the new product introduction. Yeah. Um, process NPI. Every company's got kind of a different way of doing it, but it, uh, in companies we work with, it always shows up at one, as one of their top priorities and one of their top um, initiatives to manage. Yeah. Um, the NPI process is really critical. And again, it's very much related to the product design. It reaches out to suppliers and the quality process, and it's about managing um, a project, really, how you, how you design, innovate, and introduce a new product. Yeah, yeah, and and that's again where you know PLM comes back and it can drive innovation and top level improvements, drop product costs out. I mean, it's just there's so many places it can help. You know, on one hand that's great because there's lots of opportunity. On the other hand, it, it drives some confusion. One of the things that you know we, I try and really coach people on is find some real practical problems. Don't try and do all of these you know all of these things at once. Solve a problem, be practical, and then and then build on it. Yep. And and actually, one of the things that we're hoping to do with this series is talk a lot about some of the individual problems like bomb and change control, yep. and really talk more specifically about the way that uh, PLM helps companies improve. That's great. We have a lot of good examples of how to do that. Start with one problem and branch out. Give specific yeah. ex real world examples of that. Good, fantastic, great. Thanks. It's been fun. Yeah. Thank you.